OK, can you please start by introducing yourself? OK, my name is uh, Alex Wong. I was, up until last year, uh, a member of the London Regiment and my association with the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers is that I was the C Company Commander at Ballum of the uh, City of London Fusilier Company. Um, I understand that you were originally in the Royal Anglians? I was, in the, I was in the Royal Anglian Regiment, so when I was younger and still at school I joined the Territorial Army and I was 17 when I joined the Royal Anglian Regiment as a TA soldier. Uh, what was training like to become a soldier? What was training like? Well, as a, as a TA soldier, you start your training in, uh, in a TA centre, mm -hmm. in what we used to call the drill hall. And uh, at, at that time, a company, or, or the, uh, the administrative unit for that time is a company, and they look after your initial training. So they bring you on, uh, you do all the documentation and paperwork that you'd expect to, but also they integrate you into the platoon or company. So that means typically you do what they do. And... Uh, you would take part in the, the, the instruction that they had, the training weekends that they had. But aside from that, you would also have specific recruit training. So that would always start with what they used to call the risk weekend. And that, that stood for the recruit initial, initial selection course. And normally that, that took place uh, very soon after you, you joined. And the idea was that they would assess you to see if you're suitable. So there might be some written tests and some physical tests and that would be the start and, and the idea being is to see if you're suitable to join the TA. Now the, the standards you know are probably different now but at the time it, it meant that you you had to complete a, a written test which was in the form of a tick test so multiple choice but also you'd do some fitness tests as well. Is there anything you disliked about the training? Well at the time and, and I, I you know it's a long time ago but, I think, for me, looking back, there wasn't anything I particularly disliked. And part of the reason for that, I would say, is that as a younger uh, boy, I was in the cadets. So I had some feel of what I might expect and, uh, and, and maybe have an understanding of what was expected of me. So there, there wasn't anything that I disliked. I don't think anybody likes running for three miles <laughs> you know, as fast as they can. There's very few people that do that. But uh, I wouldn't say there was anything in particular I disliked. Um, whilst you were in the Royal Anglians, um, what were the sorts of things you participated in? I think my endearing memories of the, the Royal Anglians is, as a TA soldier is taking part in the, the big NATO exercises in Germany. So when I joined the Territorial Army at the time, it was very much uh, in, in, uh, towards the end of the Cold War. So the threat was from the Eastern Bloc, from the Warsaw Pact, and what we were thinking about then was defence of uh, the, the UK mainland, but also NATO alliance and preparing for the third shock army rolling over the East German border. So all of our training was geared towards that. And every um, three or four years, there would be a, a very big exercise to test our ability to be able to defend um, the, the, the the, the East German border against a, a Soviet invasion. And those uh, exercises were typically called Crusader or Lionheart. And I think as a, as a young 17, you know, 17 or 18 year old boy, now I, can't, I can't say man, you know, um, going away for a long time, uh, living in the field, but being surrounded by people who are obviously more experienced, had more life experience, more soldiering experience, was, you know, was fantastic for me. So, you know, I was learning a lot about life, I was learning a lot about soldiering, and I was learning a lot about myself. So in general, what was the atmosphere like in Germany? In Germany, um, so, so for an exercise like that, it, it could be very serious at times because um, the, the weather wasn't always fantastic, so you might be in the middle of a you know, terrible storm, it'd be wet, you'd be you know, living in a trench that was uh, sodden underground. And typically, soldiers find humour through through different ways, and they'll occupy themselves in different ways. So, they're, they're, although it's very serious, there's always an undercurrent of, of fun, and I think that's what makes army life: is that undercurrent of fun, of camaraderie, of having that um, that bond through not adversity, but through some difficult times. So then. In 2000, you joined the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers Territory Army. Was That's there right. any 
How did you originally become involved with them? So I, I, from the Royal Anglian Regiment TA, I joined the Royal Anglian Regiment as a regular officer. Mm -hmm. So I joined the regular, uh, regular battalion, the, the first battalion, and I spent some time with them. So after I left the first battalion, I was then um, really looking for work. And I interviewed for a number of places, but actually the, the job that I chose was with a bank in London. And so I had to move down to London. And originally, what I did was I travelled back and forth from London to Leicester to stay with the old uh, Royal Anglian Regiment that I was with. Uh, but that became quite impractical. So I joined the London Regiment. And the closest London Regiment unit to me was at Ballam. And Ballam is where the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, or City of London uh, Fusiliers, is based. And uh, so I joined there as the company second in command uh, to Major Mark Ludlow, who was commanding at the time. So have you noticed any significant differences from being in the Royal Anglians to the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers to you? The, the transition from one regiment to another isn't fantastically different. Um, obviously the, the uniforms uh, are slightly different, um, but the ethos and the culture are very, very similar. I think the difference, uh, the most notable difference that I would have seen is the transition of the army, the military and the TA as a whole. So from, uh, from essentially peacekeeping, uh, peace enforcement operations that we were doing at the time, whether that's counterinsurgency in Northern Ireland, uh, the, the, the peacekeeping that you saw in the former Republic of Yugoslavia changed very markedly uh, with the, the situation in Iraq and Afghanistan. So the type of soldiering that, that was seen and that we were preparing for towards the end of being in the TA to when I joined the London Regiment are very, very different. Did you have to do any extra training? Um, to, to what purpose? for? Uh, to become part of the new regiment. I didn't have to do any new training. I think you know, particularly moving from an infantry unit to an infantry mm -hmm. unit, the core skills are going to be the same. Um, I think personally I spent more time researching the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. I think as an officer particularly you have an obligation to your regiment but also to the Fusiliers uh, as, as a body but also the Fusiliers individually as, uh, as, as the soldiers, that you understand the regiment, its particular ethos, particularly its history, and, and some of its customs and, and heritage, because you need, to, you, you need to pass that on and you need to keep that alive. Um, I understand that you might have been part of the Exercise Carpathian Express in Romania? Exercise Carpathian Express. I didn't go to Romania. Um, I, I, the reason for that was I actually was on my staff and command course at the time. But uh, I remember at the time that there was a, a lot of excitement about going to Romania, particularly because it was training with uh, soldiers in a country that we don't typically um, exercise in, but obviously they were part of the former uh, Soviet bloc. So with that regard, it was, it was interesting for the soldiers in terms of build up to understand uh, what they were going to be doing and the regiment, uh, they, they ran a, a great um, education program to help people understand the geography, the culture and also the people that they might be working with but I recall some of the stories about the Barrett blocks and the soldiers that they met uh, and uh, you know the, the equipment and the, and the landscape were, were you know, superb and interesting. And um, since then, have you been in, in any other overseas training exercises? Since then, um, actually, no. No, I can't say I have. So then you moved to the HQ company as company commander. Were there any new roles or duties? Uh, yes, as headquarter company commander, your role is very different to a rifle company commander. So whereas before you have um, direct command of rifle platoons, uh, in headquarter company the resources that you have there are more specialist platoons. So what you tend to do is you administratively 
uh, look after those um, those platoons, you look after their administration and training, but actually in deployment, they're normally allocated to somebody else as an asset, and so they may be either dispersed, for example, um, uh, the the um, the light aid detach detachment might be dispersed to another location, signals platoon will be operating for battalion headquarters and so actually they move out from under your administrative command to somebody else's tactical command. Did you feel any pressure from being in the HQ company? The, the, the reason I felt more pressure at headquarter company was because in addition to commanding the company I was also responsible for recruit training. So it's been nice to go back full circle where I then had an influence on the recruits that we're bringing into uh, the, the TA at that point. And also I was uh, uh, responsible for the shooting team. So I was quite busy at the time. So I was looking after headquarter company uh, as, a, as a company, looking after recruit training, which was a separate stream, and then managing the, the battalion shooting team. So yeah, very, very busy at that time, but very enjoyable. Um, would you say you've participated in any ceremonies or marches? Um, with the London Regiment, um, yes. I mean, every year there's a Lord Mayor show, and and that's fantastic. You know, it, not only you know are you uh, parading as a regiment, but you're parading as a regiment, you know, in London, in your home city. Uh, to the general public, and it's always on television as well. So there's a bit of sp a bit of fun, you know. Maybe the night after or the day after, you know, trying to identify people or yourself, you know, in in the TV show. You know, even if it's just for two seconds, you might see, oh look, that's the back of my head, or that looks like such and such's boot. So yeah, that's um, that's fun.